The tool that would help us understand the Six Sigma equation is the SIPOC diagram. SIPOC diagram is a process map that we facilitate to understand the high-level steps of our process. The S of the SIPOC diagram stands for suppliers. The I stands for inputs. The P stands for process. The O stands for outputs. And the C stands for customers. Let us map out a SIPOC diagram of a process that we're all familiar with. The process is how to cook rice. When you facilitate a SIPOC mapping session, you start first with the process column. With all of the relevant process owners present, you start to map out all of the process steps from top going down. And identify all of the inputs that you need for you to do this step. After identifying the inputs, you then identify the suppliers where to get the inputs. When you're done with the left side, you go to the right and identify all of the output or outputs that shall be produced after completing the process step. And then identify all of the customer or customers or recipients of all of the outputs generated by that process step. And then do the same for the next step. Identify all of the inputs that you need for you to do this step. And then identify all of the suppliers, where to get the inputs. And when you're done, you go to the right to identify all of the output or outputs that you will get after completing the second step. And identify the customer or customers that shall receive all of the output or inputs. And then do the same for the rest. Okay, let's go back to our process, which is how to cook rice. Now, if I ask you, what is the first step that you do when you cook rice? Can you give me the first step? Now, some of you might say, wash the rice. Some might say, measure the rice. Some might say, buy rice. And some might even say, plant rice. When you facilitate a process mapping session, you will realize that different persons, especially if they come from different departments, have different perspectives of the process. And it means a process mapping activity is a good learning exercise for all to understand and align the different perspectives of a process. Now let's say the first step when we cook rice is to prepare the ingredients and materials that we shall use. After that, let's say all of the ingredients and all of the tools that you need are in front of you or on the table. The next step is you measure the rice. And then after that, you wash the rice three times. Again, some might say, oh Rex, I only wash my rice twice. Or others might say, Rex, I wash my rice at least four or five times. This is again a good learning exercise for the team to standardize process steps and learn from the different perspectives of the different persons and departments. After washing rice three times, our next step is measure the water. And then after that, you pour the rice and water into the rice cooker, you plug it in, and then turn it on. And the last step is we wait for the rice to be cooked. Now we're done with the process column. The next step to do is to identify one process step, and we usually start from top going down. But in this case, we'll skip the first one because it is too broad and too general. We'll start with the measure rice process step. The next step is to identify what input or what inputs do we need for us to do this process step. For us to measure rice, we need, of course, the rice. 
And then, what other inputs do we need for us to do the measure rice process step? We'll also be needing a container of the rice, and we also need a measuring cup. And then, we also need an information, which is how many will eat. Now, as you can see, the fourth input is not a physical thing. Inputs could be information, it could be an IT system, it could be a policy, a layout, a skill of a person, and it only means not all inputs are physical items or physical things. After completing all of the inputs that we need for us to do this step, the next thing that we'll do is one at a time, we'll be identifying the suppliers of all of the inputs we listed on the inputs column. Now, in this case, we'll start with the rice. The question to ask is, where do you buy your rice? Some might say we buy it at the market. Some we buy it at SM. Some we buy it at Shopwise. And then we also ask, where did you get your container and measuring cup? Some might say still at SM or Shopwise. Now for the last input, which is an information, the question is, where do you get the information that you need? Now in this case, since the information is how many will eat, the supplier would be your family members. You ask them, how many cups of rice are you willing to eat? Now most will say, Rex, I'll have one cup of rice, please. Others might say, I'll have two cups, please. And some might say, Rex, I'm on the diet. I'll just eat half cup of rice. Now, when you're done with the suppliers and inputs columns, to the left of the process step, the next thing is to go to the right, which is the output column. Now, again, we just focus on this process step, which is measure rice. The question to ask is, what output or outputs do we get after doing this measure rice process step? The output of that process step is a measured rice. And then we go to the right and identify who is or are the recipients or the customers of the measured rice output. And in this case, since you're the one cooking and the measured rice is still a work in progress, the customer is you. When you're done with this process step row, you go down to the next step which is to wash rice three times. Again, we go to the left of that, identify what inputs do we need for us to do this process step, which is to wash rice thrice. First input that we need is the measured rice. Now, as you can see, an input of succeeding steps could be outputs of preceding steps, something like this, measured rice. Okay? And then we identify other things that we need or other inputs that we need for us to do the wash rice three times process step. And of course, we need water and we need container. When we're done with the inputs, we go to the left and identify who are the supplier or suppliers of the inputs that we need. For the water, it will come from Manila water or Mainilad. And then we go to the right. After doing wash rice three times step, what output do we get? And in this case, we'll get measured and washed rice. And who gets the measured and washed rice? It's still you because you're the one cooking the rice. And then we go down to the next step, which is measure water. What input do we need for us to do the measure water step? Of course, we need the water and a container. And then to the left, where do we get it? Same. And we're done. We go to the right part. Measure water. What output do we get from it? We'll get measured water. And the recipient or the customer of the measured water is still you. Now we go down to the next step, which is pour rice and water into the rice cooker, plug it in, and turn it on. What inputs do we need for us to do this step? We'll be needing the measured and washed rice, which is an output of preceding step. And what else do we need? We need the measured water. And what else? We need electricity. 
and we need a rice cooker. Now, where do we get electricity? Of course, we get it from Meralco. And for the rice cooker, we bought it from SM or Shopwise. And then, when we're done with this process step, what output do we get? We get a work-in-progress rice. It's still cooking. And the customer is still you. And the last step is to wait. And of course, we need time to do the waiting step. And once we're done waiting, we'll get the final output, which is the cooked rice.